Hello everyone, this is Ryan here uh, on the Ghost Layers Report. Alright, so right now, this week, I'm in Hamamatsu in Shizuoka, Japan. Kind of a little bit of a vacation and get out of Tokyo for a little while, but that's neither here nor there. What we're going to talk about today is the fact that Vietnam pretty much hell bent on getting um, Japan's nuclear technology. Now this is not anything new. Uh, this kind of agreement and deal was worked out before we had Fukushima and all that craziness. But recently Prime Minister Noda went to Vietnam shaking hands with the, the effective leader of Vietnam and said yes we are committed we're gonna go ahead and go through with this and we're gonna sell you some nuclear technology. Now this sounds ridiculously and insane at first glance but you know the situation is not as um, simple as it may seem this issue with Vietnam trying to get nuclear technology from, from Japan is related to the Mekong River now in that area there are several nations who vitally depend on the Mekong River um, Laos for example their entire culture is pretty much centered around the Mekong River. And what's going on is a few years back, um, China, several other countries, started promoting the idea of um, putting dams along the Mekong River in order to produce enough electricity because these countries are starting to grow. Uh, several of these countries are communist or socialist in nature, and the past few years, Reactionaries have gotten control of the government, so they're promoting more um, free market policies, which works in socialism to a degree. As you know, socialism is like a transition period between capitalism and more communism. So, but because of this, these economies have been exploding, especially Vietnam, and they see in, a, in the future they're going to need more electricity, more, more power. But the last thing they want to do is destroy the Mekong River. The Mekong River is a beautiful river if you've never seen it. It's absolutely amazing. And I said, you know, Laos, as an example, vitally depends on the Mekong River for their culture. I mean, their, their whole life is centered around it. If you haven't looked this up, you probably should. There's a few videos on YouTube you can watch about the importance of the Mekong River to the local people. So, Vietnam is trying to play a little politics here. They don't want that to happen. Now, also, the government of Vietnam has traditionally been very sensitive to the environment. They have their problems in Vietnam, trust me, if you look it up. But they're a bit sensitive to the environment, especially when it comes to the, the Mekong River and China's been pushing this thing of damming up the rivers. Now, a hydroelectric dam will provide most of these countries with far more electricity than they could ever possibly use. Well, this is exactly what China would want. China has good relations with these countries. They start damming up the Mekong River, producing way more electricity than they need. Well, then China can say, hey, we'll do some direct trading, you know, product for product, or we'll give you some money to get the electricity. So they basically want these countries to produce electricity for them. And they can be excused from all the environmental damage that it caused because China can always say, hey, we didn't do this. We're just playing the game. All right, so in response to this, Vietnam has decided to look for alternative means to produce a bit more electricity because they're, they're going to need more. Uh, I've been to Vietnam. Yeah, the economy is exploding there making a lot of money off the Yankee tourist a lot tourism is their number one thing number two is coffee exports yeah Vietnam coffee is awesome but that's neither here nor there the biggest thing here is um why Vietnam is pushing to get nuclear power and they're doing it because they don't want to dam up the river they don't want to become like um, subservient to China because they see what China's doing China's form of communism is not communism anymore. It's fascism. It's a fascism dictatorship. 
which pretends to be communist. It's not communist at all. The Vietnamese know this, and they don't want to dam up their river, destroy all that beauty, destroy all that cultural heritage, just over some greed the Chinese government has for, for energy. So they look to Japan. Now, Vietnam and Japan have surprisingly had a pretty healthy relationship diplomatically and politically and even culturally, especially when um, during the Vietnam-U.S. War, the Japanese were totally on the Vietnamese side of this politically. They didn't get involved militarily, but politically, they were totally on the Vietnam side on this, on that one. So they have this good relation, so they're trying to get this nuclear power because they, they want to be self-sufficient because they are socialists and they believe in this, and they don't want to be a power slave, literally a power slave, to China. Now, there's another issue involved in this that makes it a bit more complex. For a little over a year now, China has been patrolling the uh, Mekong River with uh, military and special police forces, um, supposedly um, to try to prevent terrorism. All right. And these other countries are having trouble fighting off China because China has so much power in the area. So China's going up and down the river, raising hell with people, intimidating people, threatening people. This has been going on for a while now, and the media doesn't cover this. If you look this up, you'll find what I'm talking about. It's kind of a big problem. You've got to dig a little deep for it because the media, you know, brushes under the rug of this problem of China intimidating these, these um, countries along the, the Mekong River. And that's what, they're, that's what they're really doing. They're intimidating the local people, you know, using some type of flimsy international law that gives them the authority to do that. So that's basically why Vietnam is looking to get nuclear power from Japan. So when you look at it a bit closer, it's not so much of a ridiculous, crazy situation. Now, to get your nuclear technology from Japan, look at the track record recently. And it's clear you can't trust the Japanese with nuclear power. They're far too corrupt, they're far too dirty with it, and the companies that do produce in nuclear power in this country, we are a joke. I mean, we don't have to get into what TEPCO is doing or everything they have done, they will do in the future. Kansai Electric, not much better. A couple of small-time guys around, too. You know, so that's what's going on right here in Asia. Japan is hell-bent on promoting their nuclear technology. The government is showing a complete lack of responsibility to the rest of the world and Vietnam in a tough situation they found themselves, they feel they have no other choice but to rely on nuclear energy and of course there's alternatives for Vietnam like I said not only will hydroelectric produce way more electricity than they need nuclear power will also produce far more electricity than they could ever possibly use there are alternatives uh, Vietnam is a tropical climate. It's hot there every day. I was there for about 10 days, a little over 10 days, and it was tropical and beautiful every day. So, you know, they could take advantage of solar power like no other country could. But they do not really want to invest in that. They're looking to go right into the nuclear power. Um, I'm sure Japan was aware of this and jumped right on it and encouraged them to do it. So I want, you, I want to hear what you guys think, right? You think Vietnam should continue going with this nuclear power? Or should they look more to solar? Because if you know that the environment there, it's ripe for that type of uh, energy development. Okay, so let me know what you think about this situation. Look it up, it's easy to find. Some of it you may have to dig a little bit for, but you'll find it and see what I'm talking about, okay? So we'll, make, we'll wrap this video up, guys, and please leave a comment in the comment box below. Let me know your thoughts on this situation. And, you know, make a video response if you want. I always welcome those. I get those from time to time, and I really appreciate that. As also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. It's uh, under username FreedomWV, the Ghost Layers Report. So until next time, this is me always. as Ryan here today at uh, Hamamatsu, Japan, here in Shizuoka Prefecture. So until next time, guys, this is me checking out.